Well, we're not going to be out here for long, everybody. Good morning, how are you? Lovely to have you with us. We're going to be going back to the tent very shortly because this has now turned into a squall. Uh, my name is James Hendry. In case you're wondering, I don't have a stomach problem, no. This is so that VM, who's on camera today, might clean his lens. There we are, VM. Well done. Excellent. Good. So that will remain, uh, uh, well, sitting on my stick for the duration of this walk, which will be about five minutes. As you can see around us, a thick scotch mist has descended on the low felt, the autumnal low felt here. And well, while I was sort of looking forward to going out and seeing an ominous sky and then making my way back eventually for a hot cup of coffee, we're going to go, in fact, we're going to start making our way to the tent immediately because this rain is getting quite bad. So come along. Todlo, Tod Todlo or Toglo? To Tog or Todlo? Todlo. Hello, Todlo. Good morning to you. And Todlo, of course, got hold of us using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Todlo, you want to know what animals get up the earliest? Well, some animals don't really go to bed. The monotonous lark, for example, has been wassailing through the night and just continues into the morning, so they don't go to bed, really. Then you sort of get a continuum. Let's pretend that, well, I mean, let's exclude, not pretend, let's exclude the nocturnal animals, so we'll exclude the lions and the leopards and the hyenas and genets etc etc and just go with the ones that get up early well the animals that get up first of course are the gray-headed sparrow and then the crested franklin those are the two birds that get up earliest and then in terms of the mammals you'll find that all of them from the impala to the wild dogs to the cheetah, I guess, uh, to any grazing or browsing animal, by the time very first light arrives, they start to move and feed. And that's slightly less so in the winter, but in summer, they'll start to get up and feed almost immediately that they can see, because that's the best time of the day. There's moisture on the grass, there's moisture in the vegetation. There is also um, a whole lot of, uh, well, there's there's... What was I going to say? Sorry, I completely lost my train of thought there. Um, <laughs> right, what was here? Moisture on the grass, good time to eat. Oh, they can ex um, escape the worst of the heat in the day. So that's very important, especially for animals out here, which are, well, they're in a constant state of having to look after the amount of water that they can get and the heat that they have to escape. So normally everybody gets up pretty much as it gets light. There was one exception on the plains and savannas of Africa, of course, and that exception was the human being. We get up later than everyone else because, of course, we're adapted to dealing with heat and scavenging in the middle of the day. So that's quite an interesting story. All right, let's head across to Byron. We're not too far from the tent now. We'll just give you a quick look at it if, you wouldn't, if you'd like to see it. There's Herbie. He's just going to protect us from the tent. Hello, Herbert. <laughs> VM is very excited. You love the tent, don't you, VM? I'm thrilled. He's so thrilled. Okay, so we're going to go into the tent, and while we set that up, let's head back across to Byron and find out how his trip home is going. <laughs> 